You're now tuned in to the Desire to Trade podcast, a show where we bring you the best figures of the trading world and teach you how you can become a successful trader. This is your host, Etienne Kret. What's up, guys? It's Enkrat here, Forex trader and founder of desire to trade Welcome to episode 81 of the desire to trade podcast. Welcome here from Hanoi, Vietnam. If you guys didn't know yet, I kind of modify my travel plan a little bit. I was expecting to travel only to China first, but after going to Hong Kong in the past few weeks, I've really kind of changed my mind about what I wanted to do next and where I wanted to go. So it changed pretty quickly. I've been to Guilin last week now going to Vietnam, and I'm probably going to stay there for the next two weeks before going back to China. So it's quite different, I have to say. But the one thing I'm really, really happy with is that the internet is much better here, like really a lot better, like a big difference. So if you guys ever have the choice between traveling between China and Vietnam, I recommend China for the stuff you can see and eat. It's really, really good. But definitely Vietnam for the internet is much better. And you have access to Facebook. You have access to TradingView easily. And that makes it a lot better. So today, guys, I decided to record a kind of different interview because you guys have seen a lot of pretty successful people here on the podcast. You've seen people writing books, authors. You've seen uh, Edge Fund Manager. But I don't think you've seen so far people who are really hustling and working every single day to make it to trade full-time. Right? People who are really in the game to become full-time trader and to really scale this up so they make enough money to live and eventually enough money to access the living expenses. That's really interesting. For that reason, this week I'm interviewing Julian Lim. And Julian is someone I met on a Facebook group uh, about trading. In fact, Rayer Tio's Facebook group. And Julian had a post about some things he noticed or some note he wrote after understanding what full-time trading was really about. And those notes were really, really, like, I couldn't really to the least. That's why I decided to reach out to Julian and see if he would like to share some of his notes and some of his experiences with you guys on the podcast. And he said yes. So today you're getting to listen to an interview with Julian Lim. And I really hope you guys are going to benefit from it. I really hope you're going to apply one thing at least. There's more you can apply, but just pick one and work on it as much as possible. So without any further ado, Let's go into the interview, and I'll come back at the end with the takeaways. Julian Lim, welcome on the Disorder Trade Podcast. How's it going today? Hi, I'm well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have you here, and we've discussed before a little bit, and I feel this interview yeah. is going to be a little bit different, because you're not necessarily as advanced, let's say, as most guests are on a podcast, like you didn't write books or anything, but what no. I really like is like your way of, of reflecting on things, your way of seeing how trading works and like what you've noticed from your five years of trading. So I'm super happy to talk about that today for sure. All right, sure. So I want to start by asking you, do you have any quote that you like or that inspires you? Uh, actually, I can't really think of any. Well, maybe uh, Jesse Livermore. He did mention something about sitting. His, all his money was made by sitting and waiting. So probably it was, it's probably a good idea to practice sitting and waiting in trading of course for the perfect setup that's probably a good idea to practice yeah that's a good one i love it never heard never heard it before so pretty good and julian people often want to know a little bit more like how you started to trade so how did it look like for you did you like how did you come to trade in the first place all right well what happened was that i actually started off in stock trading so i was uh I, I tried uh, dabble in the markets uh, way back in 2000 and 2008, if I remember correctly. So the markets had some really wild swings then. And after that, I was going like, oh man, I, some people really have lost big money this this time. So I tried. But well, um, over the years, I've lost some money in stocks later on when launched to Forex trading. There was a free preview actually uh, by this help by the brokers uh, in town, and uh, this guy I don't know if you know him, Sandy Jega or something like that. He was the guy conducting the the workshop, and he made it sound so easy. Well, yeah, actually, isn't so easy. Oh well, 
Yeah, but he did he did mention a quote that say in like two in two to three years time there will probably only be one or two traders left in the group out of the whole classroom of maybe thirty. So I don't know if I'm the only one or two left. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's interesting though. Yeah, when you think about it. And then how was the running process? Like, what did you go through? Did you kind of fail at first in trading or did you... Yeah, it was absolutely horrible because, well, you see, um, the thing about trying to learn everything by yourself is that you really don't have anything to benchmark against. So you will have really bad trading habits at first. You will, you will like do silly things like putting ridiculous stop losses and not having fixed uh, take profit levels and so on, or not trading with a specific system. So to tell the truth, I've like tripled my account at least three times, wow. but I've never been able to hold on to the money until maybe, what was it two years or last year where I joined a trading club for sure and uh, actually got mentored properly. So I managed to lost some of the losses back and uh, started to become consistent. So that was the changing point. Nice. In, so I, I guess it's a big like change for you not to be consistent and to be able to profit from that, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a big difference, actually. Well, that's the thing, actually, where, where I just want to highlight that, you know, for some self-taught traders where they really don't want to fork out the money or a proper coach all I can say is uh, it's really difficult it's like learning swimming by reading books or watching YouTube so I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure if it's able to be done it probably can be done probably but uh, well I had to learn through the hard way please save your money and time and angst actually yeah. right and I guess the follow-up question to this is going to be one day of how you're going to trade full-time, right? So how do you plan to transition to that? Well, it's actually quite simple, actually, because uh, I already am sort of trading full-time. It's just that I'm upping my account levels and upping my trade sizes so that I could make the higher salary out of it, actually. So, yeah. Interesting. So, so basically... Yeah, because, yeah, well, I mean, I've been working for some time, so I have... I have well, I have some money left over, so I have saved well, quite quite a sum. So it's well, I mean, it's sufficient to live on actually if I up my uh, position, position size, sizes, uh -huh. yeah, further, yeah. But what I think I get from this is that you take your job not as like a pain or something like you have to do, but something that's going to help you get more money to trade, right? Well. I don't really understand this question, actually. Okay, so like, so instead of seeing your job as like something that you don't like or that you have to go and that's like a well, pain to I'll, do, like you see it as I'll, a good thing because you're getting money to trade. Well, uh, yes and no, actually. Well, yeah, well, you see, what what I recommend, you know, for beginning traders and so on, where they, they will always think that they have dreams of quitting their jobs to trade full-time. Yeah, so. like next week. <laughs> Yeah, that's ridiculous, actually, honestly, because it just doesn't happen that way. It takes a lot of time and a lot of experience, I, I find, in my opinion, to be consistently profitable. So definitely, I, I have guys asking me, they say, oh, I just want to quit my job and I just want to trade full time. So I just tell them, say, no, you can't do that. you got to start out with either a demo account or a small account. And if you can't grow that demo account or a small account to a uh, larger account then definitely you will not be able to survive trading for a living actually brutal this it's quite brutal actually this, uh, yeah, uh, the yeah, yeah 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 because people don't want to hear that they want to hear that there's an easy way that he that, that, yeah, that they can uh, achieve it well yeah well they only want to hear that i've tripled my account three times but they don't want to hear that i've like lost money like a lot of money or so so uh -huh. technically yeah uh, yeah so well a lot of the marketing that that uh schools use actually it's quite true it, 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 it is true it's probably true it, it's not fake it's it's true but it just only tells one part of the story yeah yeah so let me ask you yeah. a tricky question then if you could like you start from day one today like 
would there be a way yeah. for you to reach your goal of staying full time faster? What would you do differently? What will I do differently? Oh boy. Okay. What would I do differently? I would have just, I would have paid for a proper Forex course. Well, I wrote another article shortly after my notes on trading with Rainer on what kind of uh, Forex coach should you be looking for. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you read that yet, but... Uh, Not yet, but we'll put uh, it in the show notes for people afterward. Yeah, well, anyway, it's a note for people, for newbies actually, to as a form of criteria to screen their Forex coaches. So uh, their Forex coaches must do personalized follow-ups and so on, and actually have personal consultations with them. Uh, they should have a trading journal. They should have. Yeah, I should have it. I should have used a trading journal from the start. Oh yeah, trading using a certain method and so on. So yeah, yeah, a lot of things. Too many things to write actually. But oh well, I'm I'm here, so I'm <laughs> I'm almost there. I mean, it's not. It's a work in progress all the time. Yeah. But. Yeah. So those are things you pick up kind of over time, and then you implement them one after one, right? That's how yep. you kind of become better, right? Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, it was a pretty hard journey for me, but uh, oh, yeah. it was. I think trading isn't the journey for anyone. I like, guess it's hard for pretty much everyone. Yeah, well. Unless for the exception sometimes, but I don't think it happens that often too. So, yeah. yeah. So I want to jump into those things you wrote in, uh, I think a few weeks ago. I was looking for really 14. I think we'll put a copy of that in the show note, but tell us a little bit, how did you came up with these uh, these notes of for about trading for a living? Well, I trade for a living of sorts, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty much my own experience. Okay, so, so those are things you've noticed that are kind of true in the market or things that are helping you kind of see the well, bigger picture? It, well, not really. I mean, these things are pretty much common sense. But yeah. I think most people are not aware of them necessarily. Like yeah, most people not- don't think about them. Well, you know, because most people are trading for a living because they right. don't, um, <laughs> they, they really have a full-time employment or at least part-time employment. Uh, I mean, they don't really, they don't really understand. Actually. But I mean, well, one thing about this is that it's made me a better trader. I mean, like I've, someone is like learning to swim. Someone has pushed me into the swimming pool and so I have no choice but to Swim, you know, yeah. So, but of course, if there is anything that I want uh, newbies to know is that they have to use proper manage- money management and trade with a fixed method for start. For a start. Uh-huh. So that's like the first thing you should tell anyone, basically, right? Yeah. Well, the fact is, trading is a long term thing. You always have to. Um, you need to be around for the long term. So it's like fighting a war. And you need bullets. So money is your bullets. You know what I mean? So we'll just have to save our money and make good trades and not stupid trades, actually. Yeah. Right. So I think there's probably two parts to it, to finding a strategy. And I feel like people can struggle in two ways. Either they're going to have a trouble finding a strategy. Yeah. What do you tell those people? Like, where should they go find a strategy? Is there a place that like... Well, okay. This is where it's difficult, see, because, you know, there's systematic trading and the discretionary trading right. and price action trading. There's like all so many sorts of trading. So I, I can't really tell them what to use. It's up to them. Mm-hmm. But exactly. I mean, if that price action, and if, let's say you have a demo account and you're pretty consistent with price action and your money management, then you should probably build on price action. If else, uh, like me or Rainer, you trade with the trend then you have to use trend trading so i use a lot of uh, moving average crossovers as a, as a in as a guideline which direction to trade so i mean as long as it works for you it works for anybody yeah? mm-hmm. right 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 and the thing i see really often like people reaching out to me and saying they've tried like many indicators or many things and they, they just don't see it work well, yeah, well, what I can say is that there's two reasons why it's not worked. Number one, it was a bad trading idea in the first place. So right. over the long run, if it's backtested, it probably wouldn't work. It probably wouldn't make any money. Yeah, maybe they haven't backtested it long enough, or maybe they have. So um, 
Or second thing is maybe, I don't know, are they following the plan? I mean, are they following their own trade plan? I mean, it, if it's backtested and proven to be profitable, mm-hmm. uh, then of course, you're going to have good times and bad times. But in the long run, uh, it should be overall a net positive. So th- that's the key word. You say long term, right? Because people yep. are often going to try it like one week and say it doesn't work or something, and then oh. they're going to switch. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've probably well, done that before too, right? Like I did the same thing before, so. Yeah, well, maybe what I used to do and maybe what many others, probably countless others used to do is they, they don't stick with the same method all the time. So they keep changing and they're always chasing after the latest indicator and algorithm and what have you. So that's why they don't make money. I mean, it's uh, it doesn't need to be. You don't need terribly complicated indicators or so on to make money. You just need a proper trading uh, strategy, which actually can be available for free, actually. It's a, yeah, it's a, pretty much. Yeah. They're like given up, but no one values them. So yeah. So that's uh, that's what I think anyway. Yeah. yeah. And one of the, the things you wrote that really kind of hit me, and this, like, this is, I think many people mentioned it before, but when I was interviewing Jack Schrager, that's one thing you said about his book, right? Market Wizard. The thing he got from all of his interviews, basically the fact that everyone has a way of doing things and like people are yeah. not going to agree on what's right. It's impossible. Yep. So you've seen that too pretty easily, right? Yeah, well, let's face it. Everyone has their own idea of what's right. So they, there's always an expert saying, oh, use my way. Or, Your way doesn't work. or Short term doesn't work. Or, longer term doesn't work but I mean whatever works for you I I can't wait like six months to a year just to wait for the perfect setup and, <laughs> and yeah that's that's just not possible for me so uh-huh. I, I don't think I can do that yeah but someone else could I don't know as long as it makes money man right yeah. right and is there any trick you use to like stick to one thing in the end or because what I feel is that people end up sticking to one thing because they're tired of like losing money or they're tired of switching all the time, or they hear that they have to stick to one thing. But like, do you have any trick on how to stick to one thing? Or Well, I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, let me think. All right. If you want to stick to one thing, what this is what I recommend. You need to, number one, you will need to have a trading idea or plan. All right. Uh, number two, you need to backtest it over six months to a year. Well, I mean, I've tried, so I had this weird well it's not really weird it's really incredibly simple moving average crossover technique which of course i tested it uh it gave me uh, about let's say about 40 trades in six months but only like if i remember correctly only 15 trades were profitable but those 15 trades uh, gave a net positive return so overall i'm still positive so Traders need to do their homework. They need to backtest their ideas. That's how they get the emotional stability to just do the one thing all the time. And if they have backtested it, it should work. If they don't, I mean, if it look, I mean, like if it return you twenty percent over six months, then over the next six months, it probably should return you at least a positive amount. Yeah, that's what I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite logical too. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's quite logical. It's not really. And of course, but what I want to say is that, you know, in, in this industry, especially in the forex trading industry, there's so much noise out there, you know? So that's like, they say, get this algorithm, get this thing, get that thing. Fine, no problem. I mean, they can spend whatever money they want, but what they need to do is just sit down and actually test out the ideas presented. Yeah, and make the commitment to stick to one thing until at least you've seen, you've seen the result clearly, right? Well, yeah, until we've seen the results. Well, that's why in some more conservative schools of thought is that trader will need to demo trade for about six months to a year. That's I mean, I've heard it going around. They need to demo trade for six months to a year before they handle real money. Well, I'm not really sure whether that's true or not, but I mean... It does seem like a good idea. If you can't handle a demo trade, what makes you think you handle real money differently? That's all I can say. What do you think is the hardest part of trading? Is it the idea of being lonely or being the only one who you can rely to? Or what do you feel it is for you? Well, everyone is different. I mean, I do feel lonely because, well, to be honest, I mean, sometimes you just can't, well, for 
for professionalism's sake, you, I don't think it's a really good idea to tell people your positions and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do share my strategies freely with with some other people in the same interest, but I don't broadcast my positions like oh, I'm uh, I'm short on gold today at this time. I don't think it's a really good idea. It, it it's not a good idea for you, and it's not a good idea for other traders as well, because especially if they are new, then they will get this leech mentality, and they will always be constantly, they will always be doubting themselves. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Yeah, take an opposite position from me, which I don't think, yeah, it's it's not really a nice thing to do to them. So yeah. I don't really. Do that. Well, see, it's funny you see that because I remember doing that a long time ago, like. Taking a yeah. trade and going on like uh, I don't know like DDFX or whatever side to see like what the expert was saying. Is it the same direction yeah. or not? So I don't know. I've, I've done that in the past too, for sure. Yeah, I know. I mean, fine if you seek validation, but what if you know what if the consensus doesn't want to validate you? Then exactly. that's where that's you. Where the problem is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, you know, I'm not really uh, very experienced in daily FX. I do check on daily FX from time to time just to check out what the pros think of the weeks uh, or the days yeah, 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 yeah. Levels, support levels. But apart from that, I, I mean, I try not to like delve too much into what exactly others are trading. So you should trade your own plan. But yeah, checking that too much it kind of messes you up, you know? Yeah, because if you're sure about your plan, there's no reason why you would go somewhere yeah. else to seek validation. Yeah, that's right. So don't do that. Just stick to your own plan. Actually, sticking to your own plan is kind of difficult too, you know. It's, it's like, yeah. if, oh, well, you expect the market to do this, but then it just turns around. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so what do you do in those situations? You just tell yourself, well, that's the way it is for now and it's going to be uh, different next time? or? Well, yeah, well, you just got to be disciplined to just follow your plan. Well, what did I do? Hmm... Sometimes I play computer games. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that, that's the fact. Like you see, if you're free, let's say if there's nothing much for you to do, no housework or whatever, if you do have a spot of free time, uh, what I find is that, you know, I've already set my take profit levels, I've already set my long or short levels, then there's really nothing. I mean, there's, and you've factored in the money management, which is like 1%. So that's really very little things uh, you can do well if you are religious you can pray but i mean <laughs> yeah it takes me about a few hours before the trade is realized so maybe you just maybe i'll just say a short prayer <laughs> i'll just play <laughs> computer games just so that you could distract yourself yeah i mean you don't need to stick with the you don't need to like you don't need to constantly watch the levels all the time. It's yeah, not good yeah. for you either. But yeah. see, one of the things that I found difficult sometimes for me when I yeah. kind of do this, especially now because I travel during the day and I go back to look at my, my trades in the chart, it's to, yeah. to get refocused in the chart. Like sometimes it's difficult. Like you don't know exactly, like you've done a lot rather than then and you want to get refocused. So you don't know exactly like how to go or what to do. So. I don't know. Is this yeah. something you've seen yourself? or? Well, let's see. Uh, let me think. Well, generally, I have a fire and forget mentality. So, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Oh, last year, I went to uh, England for a holiday. That was it last, yeah, it was last year. I went to England for a holiday. Mm -hmm. So, I have some trades over the time period. I was using my phone and FA Wi-Fi. So I can sort of understand when, you know, they'll say, oh, you can, you can like trade, just spend 15 minutes a day and you can travel the world. But <laughs> anyway, that's beside the point. But yeah, what I did was just, I mean, I'll just enter trades. I'll just set the price and I was trading on H4. So a four hour time frame. So I'll just set the price and walk away. Yeah. yeah. Seemed to work out pretty well, even though, yeah, but I, every night I would take some time to realign, but uh, I digress. But we no, need no, 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 it's, it's good yeah. to have a no. I think what you said is really yeah. important. It's like you, like every night you kind of readjust yourself. So like you take maybe thirty minutes yeah. to just look back at everything, make sure that everything is I fine. Guess so well, yeah, but I mean, of course, 
there was other things like, for example, you don't take multiple positions when you're on holiday and so on. You just take one or two positions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, uh-huh. it's a holiday, so you don't really like, you don't have so much effort or time to like look at everything. You just probably focus on one or two pairs. So yeah, it probably would work out. I mean, and of course you should, again, money management. So if it doesn't go your way, your holiday isn't ruined, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, can always recover for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, I'd like to talk a little bit about the other things you mentioned in your uh, your notes. Yeah. Uh, one of them was you don't need to have a big sum of money to trade for a living. So tell us about that a little bit. Because I think people yeah, feel well, like they either need like, I think people feel they either need too okay. little or oh. too much, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's just say this. Okay, I realized this point wasn't really written very well. But, I mean, okay, you see, most of the time, what's presented on the impressions anyway is that they, the traders are living the fast and luxurious life and they drive, uh, what, BMWs or sports. Oh. And McLaren's and so on, which is actually totally rubbish, actually. I mean, what I find, I mean, is that we don't need a lot. We don't need to live on a lot of money. Okay? We, we just need to live at a decent uh, level. So, w- what you're spending is not a lot. And so, what you make should be roughly equivalent or more than what you spend. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting kind of lost here. But, I mean, on a, on a rough figure, let's say if you have $100,000 and you have a decent return of 25% a year, so you just live on $2,000 a month. That's the idea, actually. Yeah, but yeah, it's really good, though, because you don't need to like make necessarily 100% if you only need $20,000 to live, right? No, no. But I mean, more. let's say you have 100000 and you make... Okay, okay, actually, to be honest, you know some people have made like 100%, so they make a 100 they make a hundred percent return, so they end up with 200000 and then... They drive themselves crazy by right? thinking about what's the possibilities of compounding. But the thing is this, uh don't always get, and not every day Sunday, and they won't always get $100,000. They won't get 100% return year after year. It's not possible. They could have a good year one year and then a really bad, well, not really that bad, but maybe a small negative year next. So yeah, okay. they should just probably taste themselves and maintain the same lifestyle. But I mean, of course, this is where we go into um, personal financial management. Like, for example, they should pay off all their debts and yada, yada. So yeah. It's yeah. in the Forex, but more of common sense living, uh-huh. actually. Yeah. Tell us so, about a little bit about the importance of having a supportive spouse. Yeah, well, you know, the spouse is very important. If, you know, as long as she she respects you or your spouse respects you and uh, mm-hmm. respects because you know most spouses sometimes they don't know what you're doing or they don't trust you and they go like oh why don't you get a real job or why are you doing this you know it's like gambling and so I mean you know ultimately trading also is an emotional game it's uh, mm-hmm. as compared to a scientific and mathematical game so whatever she says will affect your trading somehow so and of course, it also takes time. I mean, I've spent Friday nights in, I've spent, I've woken up in the wee hours of the morning, I've attended events. So it takes time, time away from your spouse. So, I mean, my wife's got to understand that, you know, this is what I'm doing for a living. So this is what I'm interested in. So, yeah, it's mutual respect, actually. Yeah. But and I think I would it's, even extend it's really, it to... Yeah, and divorce is expensive, so you could probably save use it for trading. But yeah, um, I would even extend this to like not yeah. just your spouse, but like even your friends and like everyone around you too. Um, yes and no. Okay, you see, you we've got to choose our friends wisely. I mean, the fact is that they are friends for partying with, and they are friends for like just encouraging one another and building each other up. So. I mean, well, I used to be younger. I had a lot of party friends, but I don't really want to, I'm not really in the mood party anymore. So in general, the the, the ones you get as you grow older is just getting uh, more selective. So you just, well, yeah, you got to choose the friends that uh, actually understand and respect what you're doing uh, and not just 
of course they will cheer for you when they win when you win of course yeah mm-hmm. so it's more like life life lessons rather than trading in general but someone told me that well how you trade and will represent who you really are so yep but uh, that's my thought about that right what about keeping your expenses to a minimum yeah well i mean that should be every trader should do that actually yeah, it's not yeah. you like oh it's it i mean the fact is uh well i'm i just like saving money and some of the things are really not worth some things are of value and some things are really are not so yeah it's like we don't really need buy flashy cars and luxury watches they are nice but you know there's some other things that are nice too so well minimalism is uh, well i find that it's a growing uh, well it seems to be growing in popularity just oh, yeah. buying things so we'll see. yeah so uh, well maybe it's probably a good idea no? i mean like less money and you probably have more for trading right right, right. yeah and yeah it's like the verification Yeah, 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 totally. And to me, one thing I've noticed recently, though, to traveling is that, like, either living in a new place or going somewhere else, you could really sometimes live for much cheaper than you could live in your home country, right? Did you travel a little bit? Did you? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, so that can help a lot, I guess. See, uh, me. uh, uh, Let's see. I mean, like, I've been to rural China. I've been to Korea. I've Uh been to England. USA. I, I mean, I've been well. I wouldn't really call myself very well traveled, but I've been at least around. Um, for some of you traders, especially for let's say you guys from Canada, USA, UK, if you have a certain decent amount of money, yeah, I guess in theory it is possible. But you're yeah, right now in what Hanoi, is it? Yeah, Hanoi. Yeah, yeah. Are you it's in Vietnam? Really cheap. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's what I noticed. It's probably, you know, it's. I mean, someone could do it. I guess I could do it. I mean, I went to New Zealand. And, I yeah. mean, uh, there was a few trades I think which were positive. So, yeah, I, if I could keep it up, yeah, I probably could last for a long time. <laughs> but probably yeah. not under a five-star hotel. Yeah, it's a, it's a different game. Then. So, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's a different game. I mean, you could go to, to Malaysia and as long as you have a place with decent Wi-Fi and internet, then... Uh, it's possible you could be a long time and not that you might want to I mean some places are not so desirable yeah yeah <laughs> desirable right. enough, yeah true I agree I agree so what other advice would you like yeah. to give listeners right now because people are going to listen to this like what should they take away from this interview well the thing is that uh, you see if you're already an experienced trader you probably already know what to apply Right. <laughs> well, if you're not an experienced trader, well, you just got to find out a trading method that works for you. Yeah. And you got to stick to it consistently. Well, it's easier said than done, actually. <laughs> uh, there are trading methods that are available online. You just, maybe your website would have some. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just pick one, back test it for six months, maybe a year, at least. Give it about maybe 40 trades or so, at least 40 to 50 trades of data, if not more, then use that method. So that's, that's probably what I can advise to them. And of course, you need a trade journal. So if I remember correctly, your page has a really decent method of trade journaling. I should use that. Yeah, yeah just, exactly. just use a trade. Totally fine. So how can people find you if they want to reach out? Or do you have a website or maybe well, an email people can write to you? or? Yeah, well, the thing is that I'm more private. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you can just list my Facebook profile, and they could just direct message me. Of course, perfect. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm I'm kind of busy, so yeah, uh, yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. We know, can ask, yeah, yeah. They could just direct message me on this, but I mean, if they want to find me on Facebook, it's I don't really post details on my trades or anything like that. I'll just what I'll do is I'll just share. From time to time, I'll just share my some articles or notes on trading with Rainer. Maybe your page, if if uh, yeah, and yeah. yeah, maybe your own page. Cool. So that's 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 about what I can do. So we'll yeah. put the link in the show notes for sure, and we'll put the links also to the article you yeah. wrote, plus your notes on Facebook group, because those are really useful. I think. 
Yeah, well, as long as yeah, as long as it's useful, I mean. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Julian, what kind of goal do you have for the future? Any one thing you want to achieve, or? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, to tell you the truth, I've like you know I told you I've like doubled my account. No, actually, I tripled my account three times. So three or more times at least, but I've never been able to hold on to the money. So. Well, eventually, I will hope to. This is really a. This is really a. This is really a difficult. Well, it's not really a straightforward question because technically, I'm sort of like trading for a living already. It's just that I'm trading on. It's just that I'm living on rather little money. So I just hope to. I just hope to uh, live on much more money. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be implementing and kind of killing up along the road, like along yeah. the way, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. So yeah, but of course I, I hope to remain well at least I hope that I remain consistent. Everyone consistent is see of a trader is a journey actually. So yeah. Yeah, it's how you do things daily that it make you consistent or not. So yeah. Yeah, well no, the thing is that I don't know, you have to feel that you're consistent. I mean the thing is uh you see you can run into bad streaks and uh-huh. and you like oh I'm no longer consistent and then you have a winning streak and you go like oh I'm consistent but I don't think that's it's supposed to work like that you know what I mean like no, no 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 you're so no, not, so you're yeah. supposed to feel like yeah I'll always uh, in the long run I'll always win and, yeah somehow yeah that that's why you want to make sure you follow your plan and track that all the time for sure oh yes please yeah yeah interesting yep so. I just want to say again that all the links are going to be in the show notes over at disartotrade.com. If people want to find all the links we talk about, they're all going to be there. And if people want to reach out to you, it's going to be there too. And well, Julian, we have a question. We asked the guest at the end of every single podcast. If you yeah. could give only one sentence of advice for traders, what would that one sentence of advice be? Money management. That's oh, yeah, actually it's two words, but oh yeah. You don't lose it all at one go. You just lose it slowly, all right? Yeah. Sounds good. It's just about managing your money correctly. Yeah, that's right. Love it, love it. Julian Nim, thanks so much for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure Thank to have you here. You. Have a nice day. So that was the interview, guys, with Julian Lim. I hope you guys are going to take something out of this interview and apply it this week. And what I would love is if you guys see the post about this podcast on the Facebook group or anywhere on Facebook or any social media, just comment below what your number one takeaway or the one thing you're going to apply. Or just the one thing you retain from the podcast. That way we can create like a small packet of action item that people are going to implement. And people are going to be able to take inspiration from this. Which is going to be really powerful. Julian talked about the importance of having a trading journal. And if you guys don't have one yet, I do have my own way of doing it. I have an article on thisartotrade.com about that. And I'll link it in the show notes. But there's also Edgewonk that you guys should check out. Edgewonk is a tool that has been developed by Morris and Rolf from Trade Society, And they've been working really, really hard to combine their effort and all their tactics of trading journal into one tool that you guys can use. I won't say exactly what I said in the last episode of the podcast, but just to make it quick, the first 10 people who buy Edgewonk are going to get access to the Desire to Trade Academy for free. So if you guys are interested by that, just check out Edgewonk. I'll put the link in the show notes over at desiretotrade.com. Just check out the channel for episode 81. And if you guys have any questions or want to reach out, check out the Facebook group at desartotrade.com for slash group. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao. Thanks for listening to the Desire to Trade podcast. To get all the information on this show, free articles, and unique resources, make sure to check out www.desiretotrade.com and subscribe. Please leave us a review and let us know what you thought about the show. It's time to become the best trader you can be. See you next time.